Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul and in this Red Game to the Com video, we're going to be discussing a series of Ryzen leaks. Now, as usual, I want to give thanks to everyone who messaged me, including Curtis, Jan, Shay, Andre, Yuzhan, again, Xavier, Henrik, Rod, and Brian. Uh, there's probably a few others as well via email who have not checked. If you can hear the odd purr or mewing, it's because I'm actually at Amos' house at the moment, simply because my internet is still terrible, and therefore I have cats on my lap. So it's going to be a bit interesting. And that's pretty much it. So let's get into the video. So there are a couple of things I want to discuss with this. The first of all is an individual uh, who is going by the name of Ryzen Christ. Well, I guess it, it does what you say on the tin on Overclock.net, has managed to get hold of a Ryzen engineering sample. Now, if you choose to believe what he's saying, it's quite an interesting divulge of information. I don't know if that made much sense, but still, I'm getting currently getting clawed uh, in the... Well, let's just say clawed by a cat. So it's making things very interesting to say. So the IPC is the very least Ivy Bridge uh, E and higher. SMT for Ryzen is more efficient I'm going to repeat that one more time, more efficient than Intel's hyper-threading. So if you're unsure what that means, it basically means that, in theory at least, Ryzen is going to get more performance out of, let's say, a 4-core 8-thread uh, processor, at least comparatively, than Intel will. So in other words, it's going to scale better with multiple threads. I don't know why that is exactly, because obviously I don't have a Ryzen CPU to do a whole bunch of testing. If I would guess, it's possibly to do with the way that they're handling scheduling, as well as a whole a bunch of additional um, memories, slash basically they're probably reducing thread contention per core. Uh, that's some of the information as well I got from Robert Halleck with our exclusive interview. It does seem that AMD are making sure that there's quite a lot of extra resources per thread. So theoretically, you're not going to get this instance where one thread on one core is causing the other uh, virtual thread to basically stall. Ryzen has no, no cold bug, which is certainly going to be useful for certain numbers of users. Cinebench R15 hits 145 single thread at 3.4 gigahertz. Uh, this is an engineering sample, um, which is slightly higher than the earlier models, which was 130 to 140. Retail should hit between 140 and 150. We'll go into benchmarks further in a moment. Ryzen, most Ryzen ES samples hit between 4.3 and 4.5 max on air with all coolers enabled. If that's true for retail samples, that's really good news. It essentially means, let's say you get 4.4 gigahertz with an AIO. Let's say that that's fairly common. So, I don't know, like 80% of processors. That means that you're going to be in a pretty good situation. Uh, Ryzen's going to be in a very good situation. Intel is testing out Skylake X and it beats out current 6950X with 8 core 16 threads because it can hit higher clocks. And then there are a couple of images that this individual has decided to post on the website. So yesterday we did go through a series of benchmarks for CPU Z, and we'll run back over those in just a moment. However, I also want to go into Cinebench R15 with the same processor, processor, excuse me, uh, 1600X. Um, now, we have both single thread and multi uh, core performance available to us. So obviously, just so we're running over it, the 1600X is a six core, uh, 12 thread processor. And an individual has managed to post a score of 1136. We'll get into the results of how that compares to other processors just momentarily. And in terms of single thread performance, you're looking at... 146. Obviously the individual is not running OpenGL because they're not trying to test you know GPU performance along with it. Now I don't have a huge number of processors to do testing with um, so really I'm just going to have to use Anantech um, website. Now they've already got a benchmark with a whole bunch of different processors. Yesterday I did use a um, two systems we have, which are Skylake 6700Ks. I did an overclock result for the uh, CPU-Z, as well as a stock result, as well as a Haswell. But because I'm at Amy's house, I don't have access to those systems today. 
uh, simply because my internet is so terrible right now, it's going to be fixed. I'm speaking to the companies involved. But um, we do still have a whole bunch of different processes. So what we can see with this particular instance, multi-thread performance is roughly on par with a 6800K. Now, that's pretty good because it ruffle stomps the lower end processors and obviously will ruffle stomp the 6700K even if it's running even if it's running at 4.8 gigahertz and on the other hand single thread performance it's a lot lower so you're looking at you know the top end processors are getting you know 190 180 160 so what that basically tells you is that well it's clock sensitive so obviously if you're running a CPU which is running at let's say 4.8 8 gigahertz it's obviously going to outperform a cpu which is running at 4.2 gigahertz generally unless the architecture is considerably worse now what that theoretically means is that if ryzen does overclock fairly well let's once again make the assumption based upon this individual who claims that most es samples are hitting you know let's say tentatively 4.4 gigahertz plus that's probably a good sign of things to come now, I would also like to point out, this CPU, and I know I've said this in a couple of other videos, but it's $260 US given leaks, which is insane. Because this processor basically is competing with CPUs, which are two or even three or even times higher. And obviously, I'm making that as an assumption that these uh, results are accurate. Now, yesterday, we did go through those CPU Z screen, uh, sorry, CPU C benchmarks. And it's pretty obvious that the performance of these uh, particular processors is going to be very impressive. It's once again roughly beating the 6800Ks and it's almost getting to the point of single core performance of like the high-end Intels, which is absolutely just bonkers to me. The fact that these processors are easily beating the 6700K, which gets around, you know, 9,000-ish points uh, multi-score. Uh, multi-core, excuse me, on CPU-Z. Uh, obviously, if you're hitting around the, let's say, 4.6, 4.7 gigahertz range, obviously RAM timing, RAM speed does play uh, some factors into this, but let's just say around 10,000 points. The 6800K stock is going to hit around 10,000. So the fact that Ryzen is hitting 16, uh, sorry, 12,500 is really damn impressive. Um, and honestly, this CPU could be really shaking up the market i hesitate to say more than that because ultimately once again i don't have a sample we will be getting one um whether amd send us one or not we'll just be buying one i don't know which one we'll be going for personally i'd rather go for the eight cores simply because it will suit our usage scenarios better but we'll definitely be getting one and probably doing a lot of testing We've actually got some more memory that's just arrived at Red Gaming's hit. We've got some 3000 megahertz RAM. So we're going to be getting another set of RAM. And we're going to be doing a lot of memory timing testing and clock speed testing and basically seeing what we can do with it. And I don't want to do like super high-end water cooling loops or anything like that. I would like to use a couple of different coolers, um, like a basic tower cooler and maybe a decent AIO, maybe from like Cors Corsair or something like that. And just basically see, okay... What can we get out of this particular processor on an average scenario, which I think would be nice. And if we can get a couple of Ryzen CPUs, we'd certainly do that. And basically, I want to compare that across a couple of the usage scenarios. Primarily gaming, but also just basic, you know, image editing, audio editing, and just kind of see, is it worth it? Especially for folks, because I know a lot of people have obviously invested in like a 6600K. Um, which we can pretty easily simulate. We can start doing some really good benchmarks for that. So anyway, um, I'd like to thank everyone once again for, you know, well, messaging us and supporting us. It's very much appreciated. Apologies if once again I sound a little bit distracted this video, but if I put Bonnie the cat down, she quite literally would not stop mewing. So yeah, it was either deal with a cat in my lap and be slightly distracted or you hear like, ow. Oh through the entire video and yes that was my cat impression so yeah you've learned something else as well i i don't i i think i can just say that right now my brain's a bit fuzzy as well which is probably not helping 
But hopefully you've enjoyed the video, even though it's a bit, been a bit of an unprofessional one. But whatever. So I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.